This week, we are gonna mix it up a little bit and we are talking about something that's very close to our hearts, filmmaking, because we are filmmakers and this is a little bit of a review. Yeah, this is about why House of Gucci is a bad movie <laughs> and why it matters to you. I, I've seen so many people starting Instagram profiles all about movie reviews and we just thought we'd take this opportunity to share our thoughts on that film with you so that you don't have to suffer through it because Ridley Scott, we don't know what you were thinking. How can the man who brought us Alien and The Martian give us House of Gucci? Uh, it's unfathomable. And you know, there's no, like, so we go on in this series about structure and casting and these are some of the things we're gonna touch on. Cause this movie had, a, you know, a real lack of cohesive structure. Do you agree? Oh, it started the first 40 minutes. I thought I was watching a really bad comedy. Yeah. And then it turned into a really, heavy drama. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is going on? You know, there's a reason we hear about three act structure and there's a reason we hear about, you know, these common storytelling techniques in Hollywood that help an audience get through. I was so lost in this, but it applies to every one of your videos. It applies to the short films you're doing for Instagram, the movies you're making for YouTube and your longer form content as well. It needs to have a structure that the audience can follow. Otherwise they're gonna get lost and go, what is this? Yeah, and, and he'd managed to get such a great cast. I mean, it was a really, really top level cast. And I think the performances, for the most part, were pretty good. It's just the script they were working with made no It was no a bit noses, sense. though. It was a bit noses. For those who don't have a huge snoz, you know, like there were so many actors with a big nose, you know, it kind of made you feel like, is this only for people with a big nose? And that's the thing about casting, isn't it? You've got to cast people like your audience. You've got to, you know, put people in it. And I just felt like it was very noses. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about the nose thing so much, but more, you know, the wardrobe that they kitted out Lady Gaga in. Yeah. That was really over the top. There were so many things nice. that were wrong with it, but for me, the biggest thing that was wrong with it was that it just didn't string together as a cohesive story. Look, it's about an Italian power family and there were some great Italian actors in there, but there were a lot of non-Italian actors where you're going, my God, it sounds like, you know, this is the worst accent impersonation ever, you know? So you've got someone like Pacino, he's amazing, you know, and then, you know, some of the others cast in the same family. So again, this is about cohesive casting. For your videos, it might be about having, you know, experts and consumers and people like like this, um, they need to fit together, you know, they need to be a cohesive whole and be authentic and relatable. And I think that's really where that movie fell over for me. Yeah, and I, I, I don't even know how they would classify that into a genre. We did an episode, a, a little, oh, I don't know, yeah. quite a few episodes back on, you know, genres and, and how to fit your film into a particular genre. And this one, I don't know if it was comedy or drama or... Like, I don't even know. I don't know what it was rated as. Yeah, and uh, the ending, you know, like it was so confusing because you didn't know what the genre was. So when the ending got there, and I won't do a spoiler, and, you know, and I hope you don't make it that far into this film. Um, but, you know, like the ending was so confusing because you didn't know what genre you'd been watching the whole time. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you get, yeah, this information at the end and you go, okay. Yeah, look, we're impact filmmakers, so we're interested in people feeling empowered to do something at the end of watching a film. They're activated, they want to take some action. I guess in some ways this film did that because we're doing this review. So, you know, it inspired us to give it this review. So maybe it's a cautionary tale. Um, but other than that, you really want to be thinking about what are you trying to get your audience to do after they see something and inspire them to take some action. Maybe it's not just a cautionary tale though. Maybe it's just we need a little bit of forgiveness that Ridley Scott has brought us so many amazing films that we can forgive him for this terrible one and even amazing producers can still come up with something terrible. Oh, you know, like the only reason he would make this film is to get um, a pair of museum loafers. I can't see any <laughs> other purpose for such a brilliant, gifted filmmaker making um, a thing like that. Hey, big guy in the sky, have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet, but I have always had a total crush on Lady Gaga. But don't hold back, Mike. Tell us what you really think. Well, one of the members of our team has something to say about it as well. We're going to share her insights now. Awesome. Evie, hi. Come on, tell us you have some opinions on this film. I do. Look, I think it's a great story, and that's why I think it's such a shame that it didn't live up to the potential. From my opinion, it was poorly directed. I agree with both you and Mike that 
it was lacking cohesion. I think they needed to lean into a more stylistic approach and lean into the, the flair of Gucci. It's a fashion film. I think they should have taken a lot more risks with the cinematography. I think the acting was camp, so I think they should have really leaned into that and had a lot more fun with it. So it just fell a little flat for me, unfortunately. So that was our rant on House of Gucci. Come on, leave us some comments. What did you think? Did you love it or hate it? We really want to know.